Hello and welcome to episode 6 in my risk management series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about detecting cybersecurity events. So this is a very important thing that we need to be doing in any environment. And there's so many different levels to this. You could have a full-blown SOC, which is a security operations center, running a really nice, expensive SIEM tool. Or you can have just an IT member just responding to incidents and alerts that they might get from the antivirus or anti-malware that they have installed. And there's different types of monitoring that can be done. So for our fictional company, at the moment, there's no monitoring or alerting in place. So that's definitely a huge risk. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. In this video, I'm mainly going to be presenting you with the information and showing you some of the stuff that I've written within our project section of our Notion page. And your role is to take that away and build on that and assess the risk using what you've learned so far. And then in the next risk management series video, I'll be presenting what I would have done and what that would have looked like. And you can use that to compare. So yeah, let's get into it. So first things first, I have added this to our risk register. Um, and it's just a second risk we are going to be looking at. Again, the likelihood and impact is very high and don't worry too much about the numbers because it's more the concepts behind the risk assessments that we're conducting and the ideas and controls and practices that we're trying to implement is what's important however yeah you know at the moment we're not doing any monitoring and there's a very high likelihood that if there was a hacker attacking the company or someone internally doing something malicious that we would not even know or be able to detect that so yeah We've got the access to systems under control to some degree. Now we want to be able to monitor what people are doing. And a lot of what I'm pulling from is actually based on the CAF, which is a cyber assessment framework. So I'm using this because it's not commonly seen in the industry. It's still quite new and still kind of gaining a foothold, but it's very popular within the UK government. And for those of you who don't know, I do live in England. So this is something that I've been learning and getting very familiar with. So yeah. The CAF framework is kind of the place where I'm getting some of the ideas for the controls of what good looks like. And of course, my experience and learning and study along the way. So what we're trying to achieve is some monitoring on the infrastructure. There's two types of monitoring you should be aware of. First is called HIDS, which is host intrusion detection systems. So these are like agents or software installed on a laptop on an endpoint, and it monitors that specific endpoint and Mainly, they're checking for like file integrity changes, some stuff that's happening maliciously on the system. They can also act as data leakage prevention tooling, but it's normally better to get something more specific to deal with that and instead of looking for an all in one security solution because they typically don't exist. And that's not to be confused with an XDR. Now, an XDR is similar to HIDS, except it actually detects and responds. So it can actually do stuff automatically. And HIDS is more of a kind of detection capability, but can also behave like XDRs. It can get a little bit confusing, but just think of it this way. There's an agent piece of software on a laptop, on a computer, and it's monitoring and trying to protect that computer and reporting back to like a central console. The other type of monitoring you should be aware of is a NIDS. Network intrusion detection systems. Now, these are actually sensors placed on the network itself and monitoring traffic flying across the network packets. And yeah, I mean, they can be a physical device, or again, it can be software based depending on the type of network you have. If it's like a software defined network somewhere up in the cloud, that's going to look very different to actually putting a sensor in front of a firewall. And generally, what we want to do is actually use both types of monitoring, so HIDs and NIDs, and aggregate that data and put it somewhere centrally into a SIEM tool. Now, a SIEM tool is specifically designed to actually ingest all of this data, and there's different behaviors and things SIEM tools can do. Some SIEM tools will automatically kind of threat watch stuff as it's coming in and analyze it before it even gets to your dashboard and kind of give you an idea of what the tool thinks that specific network activity or host activity was and then you've got some tools that literally just kind of pull the data and you've got to go threat 
hunting and actually look for malicious stuff. But yeah, generally they aggregate logs and it's a little bit similar to data analysis in a way because you're looking at data in real time and you're trying to understand what it means, what's the story behind it. Why has that person or that IP address done an Nmap scan every single day for the past week? And then today they've done a more intrusive scan or they've tried to access something or they've tried to open a connection. One Nmap scan by itself doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, that's just normal internet noise these days. But a series of scans from the same IP address followed by something else or just the scans alone could be an indication of something to come. And what SAC analysts do can create so many different rules to detect to categorize, to identify issues. I should mention also that SIEM tools are normally connected to a kind of live database. So a really popular one is the Open Threat Exchange by Alien Vault. But there's so many others all over the world that essentially publish little strings of data called indicators of compromise IOCs. And those will basically tip you off to, if you see this on your network, it most likely means this. So if you see this on your endpoint, it could mean this. So yeah, that's a very simple simplified version but I hope that gets a point across in terms of why it's important to monitor networks and systems because a lot of companies that are hacked that are breached typically have hackers on the network sometimes for months or years without even knowing so yeah very important and all of this stuff happening and all of these alerts and blah 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 is generally just an event something happening sometimes it's not malicious it can be someone doing something internally that's triggered a system for example if you're backing up across your network or to a different network or area that could look like a ransomware attack because somebody's pulling all your data and backing it up elsewhere which could be followed by encryption to lock you out of the old network or system so yeah you need to have someone who's got the skills who's got the knowledge to be able to contextualize what they're seeing check with the company and the team and identify these issues and another very important thing to understand when it comes to monitoring or alerting and detection and whatever you want to call it is a baseline you know what does normal look like you can't just begin monitoring an environment without knowing what the activity is what stuff happens on that network how the systems connect and talk to each other. You need to have a period of understanding, a period of studying what the activity is on the network so you could understand what normal is. And then when you see something, you can recognize that as an anomaly something that kind of breaks a threshold so this is a mixture of like people process and technology where the team and the tools need time to really understand the infrastructure that they are monitoring just as a quick example if a SOC team was monitoring an e-commerce website let's say something like Amazon you know on Black Friday on Amazon's Prime Day they're going to have a surge in traffic you know the SOC team needs to know that if they don't know they're expecting a surge in traffic they could think that it's some sort of DDoS attack or something malicious happening. You know, that big spike in activity is something that they have to be aware of. The context of the business, the organization has to be understood. If you're monitoring like a government association or the electoral kind of commission around election time, they're going to expect a lot of traffic, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of activity. So yeah, the context of the organization is very important to understand and kind of securing logs and gathering logs is its own thing. You know, you have to be able to protect the integrity of the logs, knowing that they haven't changed, knowing that they haven't been edited. If an admin, for example, is doing something and then deletes and wipes the logs and has access to do that, that's a big problem because how do you know what they've done? There's no evidence, there's no traceability, there's no non-repudiation, as we call it, where you can prove that someone did something. And yeah, this is one of the things that gets better over time because as you get to know the network more, as you get to know the activity, as people become more experienced, you know, you can enrich the logs, set specific thresholds or alerts based on the context of that organization you can enrich it with like information and attacks from that market or that sector so if you're protecting like a big pharmaceutical company understanding what attacks all the other pharmaceutical companies have experienced over the past year or two is very relevant and very important because that's most likely what you're going to be protecting against so yeah i mean there are other things also that a SOC team might 
do as well as kind of be that watchful eye monitoring the networking systems they could actually have like a incident response function a common misconception is that every SOC team is an incident response team they're not they're two different skill sets entirely don't get me wrong they work together they help sometimes a SOC team has an incident response member or members on the same team but not every SOC team actually responds to an incident some SOC teams just point them out look we're seeing something bad over there go and deal with it don't confuse the two and think they're the same thing because they're really not also like vulnerability management you know the same tool might have a vulnerability scan or might integrate or plug in with another scanner and pull that data in for extra context but again they're not a vulnerability management team or people in charge of that sometimes that's part of their responsibility but again most of the time you might have somebody else owning the vulnerability management program entirely and just feeding that data into the SOC team to help them so yeah it's very important to understand that a SOC team can look very different you know they could be a full-fledged team with like security engineers with SOC analysts with incident response people and someone dealing with all the documentation processes you could have someone who specializes in like AI and automation and machine machine learning to help define baselines and thresholds you could be monitoring like a huge environment or thousands and thousands of servers and computers or it could literally be one or two people looking after 100 machines and one or two and a hundred machines so the capabilities of the SOC team does vary but anyway so for our company we have to understand the context so as I said their infrastructure diagram they are pretty much a Microsoft house with a small on-premise network so within the network itself which I'll pull up here let me just zoom in I've redesigned this I know it was in Google but I've actually used Mermaid and yeah just thought I'd keep it one in Notion just to make things easier but you've got your team there know all the users you've got the firewall they have to VPN and connect to the firewall and then from there they can essentially access the corporate network Microsoft services etc etc what you can see is a kind of Power BI server Power BI database finance application and database server finance application server finance database and the Microsoft Microsoft services do also need to add the HR system which for some reason I forgot to add here but I'll add that later if you were going to put a NIDS sensor on here it's very important to pick a good place to put it so for the HIDS the host intrusion detection agents and sensors they will just go on these laptops of these users that's easy enough to do you should also have some sort of HIDS capability on the servers themselves as well and Microsoft services generally have their own security alerts so it's important to have those logs understood as well but yeah if we were to put the NIDS sensor the network sensor on the outside of the firewall essentially facing the internet the sensor is going to pick up so much noise and that would be kind of a mistake to put it there to be honest but not in all situations but generally that's a bad thing to do I mean it's literally facing the internet it's picking up all the internet traffic and noise that's coming in and poking and prodding and yeah most of that stuff will be blocked automatically by the firewall rules however we're more interested in what's actually got through so we'd probably put it between a corporate network and the firewall itself to see what's got through and you also have the firewall logs themselves pulled out on ingested into the seam tool the most firewalls modern firewalls have great logging capabilities so that's very important so that just gives you an idea of what I would plan and give you some information on that now what you should do next is actually go into the risk register itself open this expand the page look at some of the basic things that I've written or put in place around security monitoring and complete the rest of this so it doesn't necessarily have to follow this step by step I've just used this based on the NCSC guidance but it can look slightly different so yeah I'll leave that with you this is a very important step in the project because alerting and monitoring is so important and let me know how you get on in the comments below and in the next video i will have updated some of the documentation and stuff within the notion page and will also complete the information on how i would have approached this scenario considering a specific business context so yeah if you've liked this video please like comment share and subscribe and i will see you in the next one